against the wall I'm never giving up, I give my all I'm never looking back, attack It's in the past Hey guys, it's Jojo93. So you know, we I just watched I did my review for Danzel a little bit ago, and that was a pretty good, and that was a pretty good review. But right now I hold in my hand something that you did not expect me to talk about, which is when I went to Best Buy because so if you guys don't know, during 2023, so many movies didn't get exposure and didn't get a lot of credit and weren't put into theaters because the writer strike was was not allowing people to release the films and get the marketing that they deserve because actors weren't getting the right pay and writers weren't getting the right pay. So sometimes things just got released as straight to DVD. And, but sometimes when you find something that's released straight to DVD, it's not bad and it's also not what you expect from something released straight to DVD and you should have got a theater release. This is one of those cases. So when I went to go see, when I went to go see Madam Web, I watched it on Madam Web with that bad taste in my mouth. I had all those Madam Webs in my mouth. Ugh, it was gross, right? Pulled them out of my teeth. Just, ugh, it's super, super cringe. And so I was walking out, trying to pull it out of my teeth, do everything I was doing. I walked out going, you know, Morbius is better. And it's time I own Morbius. So I went to Best Buy. I bought Morbius. And I got a nice 4K copy of it for under $14. And then I'm looking on the shelf and I see this beautiful movie with this beautiful purple case, which you're probably looking at the thumbnail for right now. And it's called King of Killers. It's from the creators of the characters of the Underworld franchise and I, Frankenstein. I, Frankenstein is fantastic. The Underworld franchise is fantastic. It stars Elaine Moosey, a brand new international action star who has been with us since 1981. But I guess he, much like the movie, did not get the exposure that he deserved. I consider him to be the French slash Canadian version of John Kreese or young John Kreese because he looks like him. Uh, we also had um, UFC fighter George St. Pierce um, and Stephen Dorff. And you guys don't remember, Stephen Dorff and I don't have the greatest track record considering the man who was an original actor in the Blade franchise who has been shooting his mouth off when he shouldn't. And so that's the whole thing. And then we also have Frank Grillo and some other actress I haven't heard of, uh, Marie uh, Alpazis. I don't even know how to say her name. I'm not going to try and butcher her name, but... You know, we have badass action chick. So this movie is called Tina Killers. It stars Frank Carullo. Ren. What's going on, Ren?
And of course, St. Pierre, aka George. So you have the leapster from Winter Soldier as an assassin being hired to go up against Crossbones. So let's put, put that for a minute. Two Marvel villains going up against each other. Um, and then you have this new villain, this new hero called Marcus in the movie, played by Elaine Musi, who is actually kind of like the next Van Damme. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. So this movie's fantastic, guys. It has got twists and turns. It's got incredible, incredible stunts and action, guys. There's sword fights in this with two amazing Frank Rilla wielding a sword against, against this incredible martial artist. There's a fight scene in this movie where a bad guy who's supposed to be on their team betrays them as a typical plot twist. And our main hero, Marcus, does his homage to the helicopter kick from Bloodsport and kicks this guy into a fucking fan blade. It was from King, as you know from Kingsman, fucking spectacular. Eh? That is fucking spectacular. Like, it was so good. This movie has great action, has a great score. The director even gets in here and steps up in the fight scene and he goes and kicks some ass, but unfortunately is defeated by Frank Grillo. But you, you get great action, great storytelling, incredible choreography, beautiful movie. Incredible action. The script is great. And I expect nothing less from the Underworld franchise or the I Frankenstein franchise. I think they crushed this movie. I think they did it absolutely brilliant. It, the ending even teases a sequel. And I want a sequel, guys, because this movie is great. It's absolutely fantastic. If I would have saw this in 2023, I would put this on the same level as John Wick 4 because it's so good. There was such good action. I was invested in the story. There's a lot of emotion and heart because the reason that our main character is involved has high stakes. He's doing this for his daughter, and then you have a subplot about what happened to his wife. And it kind of tricks you where you think he's responsible for it, but then da -da -da, it was Steven Dorf all along. We hate Steven Dorf so much that now he's the villain, and I want the sequel so he can get his head chopped off for the shit he said about Shang-Chi. I will never forgive him. <laughs> so yeah, guys. This is my thoughts on this movie. I loved uh, King of Killers. I'm going to give it 10 kicks. Out, no, I'm going to give it 9.5 kicks out of 10. Because we need the sequel and it hasn't been announced yet. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we go, oh, actually, I meant to do nine, but I did one extra one. But yeah, so guys, 9.5 out of 10. I love this movie. If you guys have seen this movie, share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you like what you see here and you want to see more, click right here to see more. You liked that, didn't you? Silver bullet finish. Thank you. Have a great day. Woo!